again i still expect this to be a pretty high prior pick just because you should know me is here and Shu had such a strong looking series on it last week that i think they just want to keep him on comfort as much as they can the issue is sure you know YSK probably just locks in the Fiora here again because he was so <laughs> was confident say, on it in game one. Game? Oh, like okay. Him. All right. Ooh. So I guess the, the thought process here is because the Yumi's there, LGD are always going to lock in an AD carry and IG don't want to have to potentially soak up two bands uh, in the AD and support. So hmm, I, I would have thought maybe IG would have gone both solo lanes here and made, you know, LGD kind of sweat for a little bit uh, and maybe eaten up another two jungle bands. But hey, uh, yeah, I guess they just wanted to match the bot lane full on. They will still be able to ban away two more Meteor Champions, so that's going to feel very good for them. Uh, but quite surprised that we saw the full bot lane come out here. I guess they just don't want to have to deal with, you know, Hyper Carry plus the Yumi without having a pair in their own. Yeah, and to me, it also feels like IG are definitely confident in their solo laners going into the second phase of, of picks, right? Like, it definitely feels like they're using a little bit of the confidence from game number one, holding over into game number two. Now, that back to that theme of momentum, right? But it, it is Wukong banned away by IG, so obviously focusing towards that Meteor Champion pool, like you say, but it is top lane. <laughs> they don't want to go. You should know me's way. Gets a little mm. smile. I see that smile, YSKM. I see that smile. It is the Jace and the Fiora, though, targeting him in the top side. It's, it's the pride moment, you know, where you get two champions that you are very, very A, well known for, but B, very damn good at, uh, taken off the board. The issue is, you're probably still going to get Cassante here, I feel like, if you're LGD. I would expect that will now be YSKM's response, unless he's got something else that he feels like playing into the Jacks. Uh, but Cassidy didn't ban earlier on, kind of signaled to me that we could have maybe seen a pathway for Silas at R3, but of course with the Yumi. Uh, not being first picked and taken i guess of course lgd had to kind of pivot off that and ig removing away two junglers still leaves that one up and available to be snapped up we'll see what meteor takes because it's very rare that we get jungle left all the way to r5 but uh i suspect ig are gonna go something like the azir Kasante in the same rotation here and hover uh, was shown for it and i feel like there's no reason to do it uh, not, yeah, I think sorry. the Cassante obviously fits here uh, yeah. very, very well for the setup, and, and especially for YSKM with a little bit of strength in that side lane. A, a tiny bit different, it feels like, how that laning phase is going to go, but obviously still a lot of strength and outplay potential for YSKM. Now, this would be an interesting choice here. We're looking at this mid lane for IG, something that Dove has opted into already in this series so far has been the the... Galio for that little bit of facilitation from the mid lane, but this is a pick that he's been comfortable to go towards, and it is the Azir coming out here. Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Are we getting? I mean, it's the Silas counter. Jungle. <laughs> Silas jungle actually could be what the poor call here is for LGD. I, I sometimes forget that's even a flex pick just because of how rare uh, it does happen to come out. Oh, but of course, we saw yes. some of it come out of worlds, right? So now we get the Akali. Uh, high Chow taking the 1v1 counter and like you get excited for we've got three diving champions on the side of LGD with a Sivir to buff them up with the movement speed and a Yumi as well to make them even harder to lock down. IG are going to have to be careful and they're going to have to retreat a lot but they've got a lot of strong peel tools to deal with some yeah. of these assassins and some of these divers so this is going to be a very intricate game of cat and mouse which I feel like IG <laughs> are always going to be on the you know sort of retreating end at first and we'll see how they respond to LGD's almost telegraphed and expected aggression if only we had the twist and really be cat and mouse but i will say <laughs> for me here it is a, a semi threat of always getting all in there's pretty much there if you drop below 80 percent hp you're at risk of dying to akali pretty much always so we'll see how lgd use these tools and how again ig are going to respond to them a lot of scaling on both sides a lot of dive a yeah. lot of retreat on the other so we see as we take to the rift ig playing a little bit cheesy there you hear the gyos coming out for both sides here crowd has woken up and come to fervor as a second game very important for lgd to push us to a third game or ig with that quick turnaround from the two the the loss from from tt and now trying to, to regain their stature here themselves and off the back of some so far very very high mechanical ceiling plays coming out from them and this time around will be no different as uh we we wanted to put such a big focus towards bottom lane we saw that it is still tried and true for gideon to give ys cam a bunch of resources in the early parts yep and starting on the bottom side of the map 
potentially indicates that there will be an early visit from Gideon to the top side. And it is actually one of my critiques from LGD's last series and technically, you know, moving into the second game after witnessing the first game, Xiaoxu needs to put a little more respect on the map and specifically where the enemy jungler is dying level three last game. You know, a little bit harsh, you're crashing that third wave or fourth wave. It always feels bad to die on that gank timer if you are trying to crash in that wave. But, mm -hmm. you know, giving that kind of advantage over to an opponent likewise, Kim, very, very risky. But bottom lane trades, very aggressive Yo. from the jump here. They're feeling very different from last game. They say, you had us early, like first four levels, five levels. That was terrible. We're going to give you a little bit of your own medicine here. And it's funny to see that adaptation from IG on this bottom lane. They were perfectly fine going to double ADC composition and still executed it last time. But now with a little bit of enchanter uh, support going over to LGD, they say, we'll meet you in that one as well. And Wink's perfectly fine adapting his playstyle here and picking yet another champion for the first time of the spring split. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, Mazel, if at this point supports weren't comfortable playing <laughs> Zeri, Yumi, uh, and Lulu and Sivir in any side of that matchup, I'd be mm -hmm. disappointed in it. Uh, Gideon? Uh, I wonder if he was feeling like maybe he could eye up mid lane dive just because of how low high Chow just got. But uh, probably just recognizing that his original goal was to come here and take this blue buff as his bottom side of the map is getting pretty much supreme pressure. Arm is going for a reset. That'll be a blue buff steal away. And Meteor is not going to have any response to this. And he's yeah. probably even going to eat two saplings as he comes and to check for his blue buff. If he even checks. Oh, he, he knows. And I, I do want to talk about this jungle matchup a little bit. Obviously, we're getting the, the standard here from Gideon with the Maokai. But how does Meteor expect to play into this matchup on the Silas as well? So typically, at least my understanding of the matchup is that Silas kind of just, you know, outskirmishes, outscales. They bring slightly different things. Of course, the big uh, point is that Silas uh, can steal away everyone on the enemy team. So you can technically be Maokai and then also have four very strong ultimates to have in his back pocket. And very interestingly enough, the last time that uh, his pick was where I was, I believe, I didn't actually catch the month and day, but it last came out in 2020. Jungle Silas, apparently. So uh, it's been a long time since we've seen it, but yeah, that's kind of how the matchup goes. You, you should be winning the early skirmishes, and you kind of can provide what Maokai can in those longer range engages. And speaking mm. of long range engages, oh no, oh no, maybe. yeah. He spell shields that Bramble Smash though. That was actually so clutch. Waiting until the right moment to use it. LPC, big time play. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a mind game, right? Uh, as Gideon, you can either try and throw it in early because you feel like LPC might not wait, or kind of just wait it out always and see if you can just get the flash follow it with a flash Q. Uh, either way, LGD AD carry loses their flash LPC and he will be a little bit vulnerable now if a return gank or play ends up being followed up on. And I think Gideon is going to return back here. You do have Vidir on his way to try to match this. And I, I want yeah. to see how this early level three, level four fight's gonna go, but LPC's taking a lot of damage in the outright. Meteor sneaking into the alcove. Ghosts have been popped. LPC playing very aggressively, and IG know that something <laughs> is up. Yeah, they have a ward in that back brush, and Meteor's now actually getting quite suspicious. He pops the sweep up, finds it eventually. Kind of just wondering, why would they turn around when uh, such a free kill was standing in front of them? <laughs> I suppose they had information. And yeah, you can see LPC, once he popped that ghost, also kind of feeling himself. I think he cancelled a couple of war attacks, and if he hadn't, maybe he could have spurred a uh, flash out of one of the bottom laners of IG, but either way, um, play fizzles, Ghost is expended, so now LPC has no summer spells at all, and I expect IG to maybe just continue to return that aggression to the bottom side, because unlike game number one, there isn't really a volatile top side matchup to work with, at the very least not until level six rolls. Get the double TPs back in the mid lane by Hai Chao and Dove in this uh, this matchup that will more than likely see some influence at some point or another. But right now we've just had a carousel going and that carousel revolves around bot lane. Gideon, again, last game, very aggressive on the Meteor. Kept him from those very proactive ganks in the early levels. Is doing so yet again. And that vision gain is oppressive from the Maokai. Yeah, if only Gideon knew he could walk Literally around. Literally just walking into kittens. Maybe smite and yeah, like you say, he is just walking into kittens. Is he is he gonna check this push? <laughs> no. <laughs> Gideon just playing mind games here. 
Uh, yeah. A little bit I of sus coming up though, as that control ward saw on and wink hovering over. So it definitely signaled that Gideon was over this way. And I think that's where a lot of the vision game, these mind games, are going to be played back and forth in this early game. Yeah, I don't know. Gideon just standing in there. He's just standing He's there. Getting, well, I thought he was gonna do the dragon. Menacingly. I was like, okay. So did I. But <laughs> he's just been standing around for like the last minute and a half. But if oh. he finds a kill, what does it matter? Hi, Chow. Too early. But he uses the perfect execution to get out of there alive. Didn't have to burn his flash. So gank goes wide from Gideon. Yeah, sticking power from Maokai shown, but also the flexibility of Akali to be able to get out of a position like that in comparison to basically a lot of other assassins even. Uh, shows why this can be a very, very nice matchup for Akali's pilot, even in those situations where a shuffle would usually mean a summoner spell or a death. Catch our pilots that one out to safety. And IG don't find anything besides some mid lane pressure into a dragon, which realistically they probably would have gotten anyway. So feels not too bad. Mm -hmm. Infernal Dragon will go over and definitely IG very happy to get those stats, especially after how arm played and now that they have an Azir. Scaling AD and AP gonna feel even nicer to have. And we immediately see pings coming down, at least from Gideon as he started his back towards this Rift Herald. Now back is coming out from Meteor. The big question is, do we see him try to answer towards this top side as Rift Herald coming online while On and Wink have such a big push on bottom side? Yeah, I, I feel like usually bottom side priority actually has more sway on uh on the, on the rift herald than the top side one does so i think if on wink can keep very consistent bottom side priority then ig can secure this one a little easier for now you can't actually quite see the top side uh match up on where the wave is specifically it looks relatively neutral maybe leaning a little bit more to lgd's side right now just because you should know me is kind of backing away yeah it looks like that's the case i think ig kind of have the lane set up at the moment right. to get this one done. Meteor is level six. He's hit yep. the mountaintop. He can do things <laughs> with his ulti. He can steal them away. See uh, how active he can be now. Now pinging towards this top side, pinging towards this Rift Herald is IG. They're moving all the bot lanes up, at least uh, leaving on down there in the bottom side by himself. Uh, should be a Rift Herald secured by LGD. Yeah, it will be the case. Nah. LGD will get this one, and I feel like IG definitely had decent enough setup for it. So, LGD turning that one around feels very, very nice for them, especially after losing the first dragon. And now, you definitely want to see them probably put it into LPC's back pocket, right? He's the hyper carry at the end of the day, though trying to snowball your assassin in an Akali is always also going to feel very nice. So, I think options are definitely there. Jax as well, side lane pressure. There won't really be a bad Herald drop, per se, as yeah. long as they actually get the gold for it. And I'm really wondering where those resources go for LGD. We've spent a lot of time wondering where Gideon is going to put his resources for IG, but now Meteor making a play in mid lane. Wants that, sh uh, sh uh, it's not the stream, but shuffle, the Bruce divide. divide. Um, but just coming there to stop it off, saying, Dub, I'll take that one from you. Now back away as now uh, wanting to see kind of that continued clear from Gideon, that continued clear from Meteor. I, I've been looking at this very active bottom side of the map here and, and very interested to see IG's adaptation from game number one. Yeah, uh, I think the fact that IG was so willing and happy to just kind of go, you know what, you're probably going to go Yumi and something boring, so we'll just take Zeri Lulu. Uh, and the fact that the matchup is now going pretty much, you know, as you'd He's expect, actually gonna nothing's really top. going on. It feels pretty nice for them. And uh, yeah, he is actually going to top so let's see if shall shoot just needed that last awarded. minion there <laughs> for his time why is cam getting in for his divide there but a lot of mobility from wise cam don't get baited here shall shoot just trying to hover over the side like yeah, wise if... cam might step up here gets the counter strike hits though meteor can't get in range tries to flash it first divide yeah. all he had to do was do a little shuffle with his feet and he's out of there. Hi, Chow. Yeah. Aggressed in mid lane, flashing over the wall with the blast cone. LGD. Have a little bit of response in terms of an outplay for themselves, but why is KM having his own in top side? Yeah, why is KM? There was just no way to force out his W before the initial engage for me, or just kind of uses his flash for naught here as LPC. <laughs> I feel like the Emperor's Divide is so difficult to Jinjiao. use. For Silas, like you just have to have the shifting sand to make it really usable. 
I mean, it is one of those things where, you know, you do have the abund uh, ab abund you do. <laughs> abscond uh, abduct, right? So if you can get in and you've got a flash, it's it's not like it's unusable, right? But it's definitely no shifting sense. That is definitely yeah. so much easier to navigate on. And I feel like it's just one of those scenarios there, that topside gank, where if Xiaoxu can't get the relevant tools out of YSKM, the gank just doesn't work in their favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it shows right there. Man, it's been a, such a quiet early game here uh, comparatively yeah, I, to the chaos that we had last game. But maybe Fadeer trying to make something happen yet again. Curse. Went top curse side, curse. now bot side, trying to make it all the way around the world. Uh, yeah. Does get spotted out now after hitting that last shot on the, the ward there. As On and Wink feel just fine. Baiting them out here as Gideon on his way. As a response, they want to play this and this is the aggression we saw from On last game. The first move as well and yeah like you said same level of aggression from gideon hopefully he can be a little more tempered in the mid game but there is no sejuani on the enemy team to constantly a third facial prisons at his face so should be a lot better this time around and ig just stay with all of this aggression that lgd are trying to put down right now for the last couple of minutes with the herald I find it so interesting with uh, this movement from Meteor is just kind of dashing, dodging all over the map, trying to get to that uh, Scuttle Crab, but isn't able to make it there in time. We'll see skirting over the wall, but spotted out by the orb, but popped by Dove. I'm very interested. Meteor really wants to get this Rift Herald down. He's about to run out of time there, so does do so in the top lane. Xiaoshu going to get some resources while Gideon secures a second dragon for IG. Second Dragon Blissom, Hover Cloud. Dope, might be able Very to help the turn this one. Yeah, should be able to quite comfortably. <laughs> no charge at all. Nah, it's not going to charge. So, uh, yeah, LGD got that Herald earlier. Oh, no. Okay. No. No, 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 It was starting to look goofy, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> but charge won't come through. And IG, like you call out, Gideon sold out that Dragon, so... Now it's them who have the opportunity to snowball to a very early salt in this game. So despite the very quiet nature of this game and the fact that not much action has really ensued, we could set ourselves up for a very, very early, you know, sort of maybe not third dragon fight, but I could definitely see a soul fight uh, ensuing just for the sake of LGD trying to not give over that much power yeah. to the side of IG. I saw uh, LPC actually used his ghost to try and get back to lane more quickly, it looks like. So uh, getting back there quick and proper like, it will be a big cooldown utilized there. And speaking of the, the itemization here starting to come online, we get Mythics completed for Dove, for On. We also get the Kraken Slayer for LPC, the Divine Sunder for Shaoshu. And that means that you know some, some early game little power precipices are going to be being hit. Yep, exactly. We'll continue to track those items as they come in. I think especially for high chow on the side of LGD. First item on Akali, super important. Um, you know, I think those are the two big like break points or what, two two out of three of the big uh, break points, right? Level six, first item, level eleven. Those are the big big. Look at this for Akali. But, uh, yeah, by himself. Of, He's got reinforcements. They're on their own. Meteor got slowed by a cat in the bush. That is the oppression <laughs> that the Valkyrie oh, brings. Hightail goes in, but Wild Growth comes out to deflect the damage. The TP has been used by YS Cam. They've got to deal with the side lane, though, as Xiaoshu's over there. Tower falls. Xiaoshu's on a tier two. Yeah, Tower falls in the bottom side, but Xiaoshu might just get this tier two. They are all he's got quite here. enough time, but they are <laughs> running to stop it from happening. But IG, right. they stave off that play on the bottom side. He will he actually gets get it. this. Yeah. Man, that's a lot Not of gold. Bad. We haven't had any kills, but that's 600 gold. And plus that early tower over there as well. Huge stuff for Xiaoshu in the side lane. Yeah. Not bad at all. 600 gold. Gonna go the distance, especially if he's going towards Blade of the Ring King again. I'm not sure what his uh, build path will necessarily be. It could be a little more utility focused this game. Things can always change. Yeah, there you go. He's got a full field and that Ruby Crystal. So, definitely won't be that Blade of the Ring King second item this time around. IG, get the Herald. They'll deny LGD that objective. And even though they are down a couple hundred gold just because of that tier two that went down. 
they are still now going to have the Herald to use either as, you know, a bit of a pressure sink when this next dragon comes up or as an opportunity after a potential successful skirmish in the next couple of minutes. LPC is just stepped too far forward. That's a flash. Flash had to be burned by LPC. Wink was about to be able to connect that slow. Meteor and my man. I know you got a, a cat teammate. Maybe you can help them and, and like communicate with Gideon's cats. I know we were talking about cats versus dogs earlier, but like there's guys like, <laughs> man, I feel so bad for Meteor. He's gonna hate cats after this. Yeah, I uh, I don't know who. There was a cast that I was saying that like they legit don't like cats now because of Yumi, and it's a oh, really that's petty cancelable. thing. That's cancelable. That's <laughs> cancelable. <laughs> Is it? I don't. I don't know. Can't say I mean, you hate cats like and mean it. Come I mean, on. look, if if you're oh, oh, oh wait, what? Um, <laughs> that, that was look. That did that should have happened. The high challenge. They're like, all right, what? cool. I got the trade. He almost died anyways. So if he hit the if Dub had hit that Emperor's divide, that was a hundred percent a solo kill in the side lane. Why did the shuffle not? I'm so confused. I get, I, it like comes out from Azir, right? So like you have to be behind them. And that's where I was like struggling for Meteor. If he, even with the abscond of Doug, nah, when you connect I'm, that, you still have to be like behind them, right? Nah, I'm going to be honest. I've been like three Teemos further back and I've been scooped up <laughs> by an Azir before Is like Teemo that. Is the unit of measurement that, that we're using? Yeah, that's, that's the right. unit. That's the, the that's the unit of measurement. Yeah, that was very, very odd. But um, not a lot of action going on. But everyone's collapsing on the bottom side right now. Oh, there's so, about uh, to be action. Maybe just they will be. Wait. Yeah. Uh, we got a 4v4 brewing in the bottom side. 4v5, actually, LGD's favor yeah. right now as they're trying to bring down people. This is an interesting commitment from LGD. I think they, I, I don't know if they realized what was exactly forming around them now, but Nature's Grass comes out, and this is going to be a dividing line. Here comes the other kitties in response. Meteor wants to go forward as LPC is trying to get those ricochets down on. Oh, no, LPC caught out a little bit. He is able to get out with the on-the-hunt move speed. Everybody dodging away just in case the Sharima shuffle is going to come out from Dove. We get so close to such a bloody fight, but still no kills in 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Is it opposite day today? I want to fight. Like, I want to uh, fight. Surely someone dies now, right? It's been 19 minutes. This Do is we just can't now? fight until it happens? Fight, fight right? Fight. There we yes, go. It there, go. there we go. They're all in. Emperor's Divide from Dove on the sideline. LPC is still alive somehow. He finally dies. Dragon is a thousand alpha. Dragon is not the focus until LGD destroy IG in the fight. Hightown's going for another one. Doesn't have the follow-up though. Back onto the dragon and secured by LGD. Finally, after 19 minutes, we get a fight that results in kills. And it's LGD, surprisingly, it feels like. They actually secure the team fight win and the dragon. So no early snowball there. LGD, I'm not even sure really how this fight unfolds. We'll get a closer look, I'm sure, in a replay. Yeah, just, it's, it's just snappy, isn't it? I mean, I just feel like LPC should die a lot sooner. But this initial engage from Xiaoshu and Jin Zhao is really, really solid. The Emperor's Divide only really catches LPC. He got like the rest double of the team is going forward. Yeah, he got, he got double knocked up. I think um, Bramble Smash in midair yeah, made it a yeah. bit weird. Um, but yeah, the fact he doesn't die like immediately, so that target acquisition can change. And it just means LGD have a lot more extra time than they probably should. And also, LPC puts out a little more damage than he should be afforded. So they win the team fight off the back of that, pretty much. And a very superior engage from Xiaoshu and Jinjia. Now we look at next moments. Uh, items, second completions, at least. Completing for On and LPC, both going for those Phantom Dancers. And obviously, I think we're waiting on that third item spike for them as well. You got the Crick Float already there for On. And IG are, are now just trying to set up these side lanes. They want to find picks as best as possible, and they're looking onto High Chow, but he's a slippery son of a gun here, Jamada. Wow, yeah. They had very, so very... many bodies coming up this way, but just not enough confidence to follow through. Yeah, I mean, High Chow was very, very confident to step up the Duff's face there, and he might be ooh, a little bit too overconfident there, stepping forward into that tri brush, but IG are. It's a 3v3 up here, numbers. turning into a 4v3. Yeah, <laughs> this is very interesting. Now, 
Do IGN not know that there is a party in that bush behind them? It looks like the answer I, is not. The, the Meteor so. needs to do something. I mean, it's turning into a 3v5, uh, uh, uh. and they waited way too long to get the all out for YSKM. The tower's already down, but they haven't found the kill just yet. They are sandwiched yeah. between Meteor and LPC and Hai Chao. Hai Chao just takes that kitten to the face and takes a lot of damage beating that now. A little bit of weird positioning from IG. They still make it out alive. I think it's just been weird positioning from both teams in general. And honestly, Chaoshu could have been hitting on this tier two on the bomb side for a little bit as well. I think IG very fortunate that they have this window which isn't being used here by LGD. So the fight is basically just disengaged. IG get their tower in the top side. Meteor, like you said, just took too long to do anything, I guess. But at the end of the day, no one dies, so I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, and as we get some resets, more items come in for the solo laners. Chaoshu gets the Spear of Shoujin second. And uh, that Void Staff gets completed for Doves, so he's going to shred through some of those baseline resistances and some of the Merc Treads and things like that that have been picked up across the board. Man, I, every time I see Shoujins picked up for Jax, I just get recalled to the time where it literally had to get taken out of the game because he would just destroy people with it. Uh, obviously very different now, but yeah, that's all I think about every time I see this item. Uh, but we will see if this side lane can bear a little bit more fruit than it did last game. And I think we've put so much focus on bottom lane, rightfully so. And we'll get to those third eyes, we'll get to those big team fights where those are important. But a side factor that was very important last game was how YSKM was commanding side lane and pulling a lot of the attention from LGD. And we haven't necessarily seen that as of yet here in game number two. Yeah, and I wonder if that's actually a reason as to why, at the very least, IG are giving off a feeling. I don't want to say that they, you know, look lost. I feel like that would be too strong a phrasing, but please, you know, try and pull apart the nuance in my words here. They look a little less focused on the map, right? It feels like they're being a lot slower to perhaps the decisions that they're making in general to go to side lanes. And without some of that uh, guaranteed and direct pressure that you should know me typically would bring on a side lane up, huh? Uh, they look a little less sharp than we are used to, and it's definitely giving LGD a window to step back into this game. There is a dragon coming up in less than 30 seconds would be a salt point for IG. You see a back initiated from LGD, just get resets out and head back towards this bottom side of the map. As IG move out to uh, take down some vision, just check it out, the Baron, making sure they're not trying to sneak this. But some of the speed that their comp can have taking that Baron, but it's going to be a fight and i cannot wait it looks like everybody's coming down to the bot lane party to this dragon Mate. party <laughs> and we're getting set up ready to go i think no one can wait, wait what right gifts now. are you bringing <laughs> i i could i could just imagine if i open the chat everyone's it has to be like fight waiting room and stuff like this it's a three <laughs> kill game 25 minutes in this isn't the lck lads get in throw your bodies in Get what we're used there, to see he here. All right, we're about to see whose party favors are better. Will it be <laughs> IG's? Will it be LGD's? Who's bringing the cake? Who's bringing the drinks? Looks like IG have to back out of the pit here. Dragon 4,000 health sub. Meteor gonna pop that, and oh, Dragon goes no. to LPC. That's a three-man nature's grasp utilized by Meteor. And Hightown now might Oh, he misses the shuriken flip. The final chapter goes wide, and LGD have utilized all their tools and now have nothing left to fight with. Yeah, nothing left at all. And LGD just walk away with that second dragon. It was taken by LPC. It was a smite and an aura attack, so... They just kind of get away with it for free because Gideon was right next to the dragon as it dropped. Just wasn't expecting the smite to come down, I suppose. So and, uh, I was viewing party favors yeah. as kills and we didn't get uh -huh. any of that. So I honestly, yeah. IG, LGD do better. Party favors. Okay. All right, okay. get, get okay. on our okay. level. Okay. I don't know. All right, we're gonna, I don't we're know gonna what use, I We're going to use the cloud as a timer here, right? Let's okay. okay, okay, okay. Will we get to 60 seconds till the next dragon spawn without a kill? Over. Under. Ooh, are we okay? Over under. Well, the question Over is, can we keep track of that? Uh, we we, we will. We will. I promise. Afterwards. We'll be good enough. We'll be good enough. We'll be good enough. We, I believe. <laughs> we get. We get this engage hit. Smite oh, comes down, and it's a full attack from LPC. Yeah, unfortunately, Gideon doesn't smite it either, and uh, just goes over to LGD. I'm. I'm going with over. I don't think we're getting a kill until after the next dragon. I think we're getting a kill. 
I believe. I believe in crazy is our game. I, and uh, you know, three kills, in 26 minutes. These these uh, these players are chopping at the bit here. Uh, I, like I do want to see though, IG kind of collect themselves a little bit after some of that craziness around the fight and the LGD secure of the dragon because they can't let these kinds of situations get out in front of them. As control is the name of the game for this composition. It's just starting it up. They do it so fast. It, it's like they're listening to you. Look how fast it's going as well. LGD, they know the position they're in. They immediately bring you up. But that's the signal that IG are waiting for, right? They just yeah. want that teleport out. And now that, that teleport's gone, that's a lot less side lane pressure for And why has the with. TP advantage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now they can always try and pull a similar kind of deal where if they want to start the Baron, they can immediately teleport up YSKM. And then LGD are left in a 4v5 where sure, Xiaoxu take towers very quickly, but if you lose the Baron and the team fight, it doesn't matter if Xiaoxu's on the side yeah. very quickly unless he's taking the inhibitor and Nexus towers. And I do want to set something up for these next fights, especially because we've seen so far back to back, right? Meteor is going for the Nature's Grasp. At this point, I feel like that is the ticket for Meteor. If you're going to have your ulti use, you got to have this Nature's Grasp because that is the big setup tool to get these team yep. fights under your control, where you have a lot of spacing, a lot of movement abilities available to IG that you need to kind of control itself. Yeah, maybe, maybe an argument for Sharima's just for an engage tool because i feel like lgd are lacking that in general a more you know snap engage tool right i think that's a better yeah. way to, to phrase it but definitely you know the control of having that maokai armor definitely the bigger uh threat in my mind and it's why we saw silas come into, co into contention at worlds last year when maokai True. was flavor of the month a lot of it had to do with his ability to skirmish a lot stronger than the three could but also effectively just have the maokai all anyway so he was just a better Maokai for all intents and purposes. So hopefully Mio can get his hands on that tool as much as he can because right now OGD it feels like even though sure they've had two pretty successful dragon fights back to back. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it hasn't really come off of that tool. It's come off of different avenues so maybe they can True. Try and leverage it a little bit more. And I, I want to see here, I was just about to say, third item completions, IE specifically completed for both ADCs. We have transitioned out of this early skirmishing fighting early phase, and now we're into where LPC and On are the carries. They need to have correct positioning, wow. and mechanical execution is at an all-time high. Yeah, but unfortunately, this Baron gets disengaged from a really, really nice discipline from IG. Again, they just get another teleport out. Issue is, there's still another two minutes until Xiaoxu's teleport is back up and with the dragon fight coming up, I feel like they're going to fight over the dragon and then Xiaoxu's teleport's going to be back up again anyway, so mm. being out the TPs don't really matter unless they can catch one of them on the side lane and go for the Baron now and I feel like IG it's almost like they're getting restless, isn't it Mazel? Like, they, they kind of feel like they need to be taking one of these objectives now to try and snowball the game because yeah. realistically LGD's composition is very, very scary to deal with Akali, Yumi, Civit very difficult with composition that you have to actually lock people down. So we want to get the, that one going. Uh, nature's Grass stolen from Meteor, utilized, but now Gideon waiting for his to come back. Doesn't have that in-game potential, and that's honestly, it feels like been the bane of both teams. You see the Nature's Grass come out, and then after that, they just stand there and stare at each other for a while. Uh, On is trying to make that a little bit of a difference here as he's trying to get some poke down onto Meteor, but it's just this stalemate that IG again are feeling restless about moving towards this Baron again. Yeah, and I'm actually going to get on top of it this time. LGD a little LGD slow. I mean, this here. melts. Oh. The Nature's Grass just came back. Oh, they got around 4, it. They got around it. Health. They're into the pit. It's gone. IG secure. They've already taken one down as well. This clumped up fight. This AoE. IG are over the wall. And IG, they might just get rid of it. But that range, man. The range is too good. And IG play that fight beautifully. On is online, baby. It's just about getting over the wall for IG there. And as soon as On and Dove are over, they can start returning fire. It looked dire for a moment once LGD actually found the collapse. But fortunately, On and Dove have enough damage to boot right now. And once they had the Baron a little bit too much for LG to deal, LGD to deal with, really nice Dude. to get around that initial engage. But look at all of the disengage that comes through here. They they literally said, hey, LGD, you want to come jump into this barrel? 
We'll, we'll, we'll provide you some comfort. Then they all escaped the barrel, just start gunning them down in the middle of it. It was such a quick, decisive play from IG, and it's beautiful stuff. Yeah, it really is. But one thing I will say is you definitely started to see LPC's damage. damage. In, uh, in the pit as well, LPC's even though he dealt, damage. he dealt half of Arn's damage, yes, but uh, Arn also was allowed to just kill three people for fun. <laughs> so, uh, well, hey, does, he's got the four does skew things now. a little bit. It, yeah, he does now, and I feel like IG, it, it feels a lot more like they're in the driver's seat. Now with Baron, you'd hope to see that they can knock down at the very least two out of three of the inner towers here with the Baron. They've got a little less than 90 seconds left to work with on this buff. Yeah. So let's see how far they can go as LGD have to play defense with realistically not too much weight play outside yeah, of Civit. True. So if they can shut it down, it can be good. I think, uh, and I do believe the dragon was taken while we were looking at that replay as well, because yeah. we're on that new timer here. So uh, IG utilizing this Baron they have for another minute, try to push down this inhib tower in the bottom lane. I don't know if they can necessarily get this one, but they're using they all can. their strength to try to. And you gotta look at On and Dub to get the damage down on the tower. The nature's grab comes across, and that's an easy secure. Maybe onto the inhib now. Yeah, should be. Inhibitor goes down. 40 seconds left. Shao Shu does not want to let this go. Yeah. And you can see they wanted a, a bit of a repeat of that third dragon fight where Shao Shu had the Yumi on his back. Ulmer goes off, and then you just kind of go forward with the Counter Strike, but there's no flash to close the gap. Yeah. Unfortunately, the LGD can't repeat that magic. And Hibbert drops. You can see High Chow is for a flank. I guess what it out. A lot of blue ward. Nice. Nice awareness. And LGD and just lose the inhibitor. We'll see Meteor try to utilize. Oh, oh he got it! Oh. The kitties <laughs> are OP, man! Oh, wow. All right. Well, hey, Meteor saves the day on that one, at least. It is the blue buff going over to LGD. But I, I was just about to talk about the. the difference that this game has kind of brought we've been a lot slower a lot more reserved but for ig that feels like it's put a, a, a better spotlight on this bottom lane where we've seen that chaos sometimes lead to very one-sided games from the top side of the map for ig you cannot forget that on and wink have been so crucial in a lot of these game breaking wins and you have on who you know having risen up through the ra period ldl steam one summer LDL 2021 and was promoted in LPL to 2022. So the, the growth from this squad and the confidence built against a lot of these top tier bot lanes in the LPL has been really, really fun to watch. Yeah, it has, it has indeed. The growth should, in theory, only likely continue, right? And I think having a floor start so high hopefully means that the ceiling won't be found for quite some time, right? skill floor will continue to rise as now it's just the bounce back man the bounce yeah. back from that devastating loss last week or last time around to tt we'll see if they can put the nail in the coffin here against lgd if lgd have a little bit of fight back as uh, a lot of that control it is just that 3000 gold leaf but it feels like the map has secured uh ig placements all the way around it as back's now coming out yeah mm. Bottom side, Supers are starting to slowly make their way towards the base. I think Xiao Xu's got one more wave of time to work with before he has to go and answer. So this is the window LGD need to go in on. And you can see Xiao Xu knows it. The rest of LGD though can't take their opportunity to close the gap. All of IG will reset in unison. The wave will get cleared out now. And we'll see what's going to happen at this dragon because it will be soul for IG if they pick it up. And, you know, Arn is slippery enough as is. A Cloud Soul is only going to make that worse. And just in case you needed more stacking movement speed, Wink just finished the Shirelias. I know it's 45 minutes into the game. He finished off his uh, Chemtech Purifier first. So Shirelias now picked up with Cloud and Azeri. So... We could see on zoom in this next fight um, and be running around like Sonic. So LGD really want to try and shut that one down, but I feel like it's it's not a true combat dragon yeah. per se. So maybe give it over, but at the but, same time, the fights have been really close. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they decide to just fight for it for the sake of trying to deny it. 
And Dove looking for this engage here as well. I was gonna say the the Cloud Dragons have played perfectly into our theme for this match and for this day. It's the momentum, oh <laughs> and On is using it to his advantage here. Nature's Grass coming out from both sides, but. Again, IG needing that bounce back, have found it. They need this before going up against a very tough schedule next week. And it's just about crossing these T's, dotting these I's, not letting LGD back into the fold here as they push in the super minions of bot lane. Xiaoxu wants to go in for the engage. Gideon is down up as he has killed him. But on the back line, Haichao has to escape. Another kill goes down and LPC is starting to rack him up here. He's flashing forward onto Dub. Dub going in, but it's Haichao and Xiaoxu biting them all out lpc with more kills and lgd don't count them out just yet this is what they need and lgd actually crest over the 10,000 kills mark as an organization so congratulations lgd those are long death times but there's no wave i i had to hold my breath for a second uh and it's just ig overstepping very briefly lgd capitalized very happily you lose their lpc yeah, oh, okay, that's the crucial thing. LPC doesn't get touched at all. There's no one from IG. And because of that, this 4 item Civit absolutely melts the IG oh side. God, they'll they get, get both the of these. Too. Yeah, they'll get both of these objectives. They, the lead. they got so much gold just now. They have oh. the advantage. What a turnaround. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we were just talking about the momentum being in IG's favor. Well, it's completely yep. turned around. It's like they walked into a brick wall. It was, an, again, Gideon, right? It was our criticism of him in game one. This gets pulled off. That boomerang him. blade pullback. Yeah, exactly. The pullback is what gets him. And Arn just doesn't have another flash or a dash to get out of that engage there from Shell Shoot. And once he comes up, sure, he offers a lot of damage immediately, but doesn't have the health bar to work with all the support of the rest of the IG members who have already been fallen beside him so it's a 5 for 0 clean and LGD all of a sudden go from nearly being washed out of this series 2-0 to a pretty strong platform to potentially turn this into a 3 game and that's where their composition in the draft in game number two has really come alive for them to that extent. I mean, we saw their opt in to trying to get a little bit of that scaling potential last game but it was Definitely missing from the bottom lane, but LPC with the sipper this time. He is the win condition. We set it up a little bit ago, like 25 minutes or so, but it's even more clear now as we have full build accomplished for LPC. Final item GA. Exactly, so if he does die, he's gonna have that resurrection animation, something that Arn had available to him. So it is actually gets popped there. It looks like LGD are looking for a pincer, and they Ooh. almost find Wink. Ooh. That was a really good preemptive flash from Wink. Yeah, I think he just kind of recognized if I don't, I am going to die. Plain and simple. LGD get that summon spell out of the Lulu. And now Wink really has to be careful with his positioning. Because one misstep will mean pretty much immediate death. Though, you would hope LGD if your wink are focusing other people so you can continue to do your job but LGD have been really really good and just taking their their moments here when Ooh, look they at can. this uh on just sold his ga obviously was on cooldown for a while longer went with the blood thirster here so some sustain in the last little bits as towers starting to fall one by one in favor of lgd yeah they're going with this baron buff here super effective getting all this gold back only 30 seconds these towers though. for a long time but as you say, 30 seconds left with this much wave clear available. And not enough shove in, not enough range champions from LGD, right? It's just the Severe and the uh, Yumi to provide poke. A little bit of siege pressure. And against IG's lineup with much more range available to it. Looks like they will just have to disengage. So not as much damage done to the base as IG's initial attempts at their own, but at the yeah. very least i think stopping that momentum super important because now soul two minutes time no matter what you're gonna feel happy fighting for this one hi chow i think he's found wink oh wink doesn't have flash this time you ain't getting down unless your team can help you perfect execution does just Don't that come in. and dove they're in trouble now you can't get caught out like oh. this ysk oh. they're pushed back but he's putting in work he's got aoe for days they're all going golden and the fear has been put into the eye 
destroy them when they thought they had him in the first half. All that's left is Shao Shu as he takes his chicky nuggies. That engage looked so good for LGD Meteor. I'm not sure if he even meant to find the chains because they were so far away. And once the Shurima Shuffle comes in, it looks like Arn is just going to drop. But the BT swap over and the AoE damage is enough to keep him alive. And IG are going to take the Series 2-0 oh, no. off the back of a nothing pick, pretty much. It's just Shaoshu alive, but I don't think he's got enough to defend. He ain't and got IG it the will take it. Momentum is king, and all you need is on to turn it on them. They flash forward, they got the lightning crest, they got the damage. Bring it all on, because IG have resurged themselves back from that devastating TT loss, and they are right back in the saddle again. Right back in the saddle again, as if nothing really happened. Definitely still some shaky moments from the IG lineup, but with such a exciting and explosive playstyle, it's always going to be the nature of their series. An IG devastating think, for TT though, or, or not for TT, <laughs> for right? LGD. For, for yeah, LGD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had such a promise in game number one. They even had that potential comeback in game number two. You can see it on their faces. It sucks. It hurts. But it's in the face of an IG that are showing up when it matters. And gotta give props to On. If he doesn't.